the awesome F200 standard plus about $12 in upgrades and it is truly awesome. Hello drone racers. This is the awesome F200 standard edition. I reviewed it not long ago and really liked it except it had a few big issues. It needed tune, it needed a better lens on the camera, and it needed telemetry or an OSD. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the setup of this drone and fix all three of those issues, after which I think it really will be awesome, but we're gonna find out. I never did figure out exactly what lens this has on it, but I'm guessing it's a 2.8. It might even be narrower than that. So what I did is I ordered Runcam 2.1 millimeter lens. This thing should be huge and give me a huge field of vision. It might actually be more than I want. I have a 2.3, I try on it too if I have a problem with this, but this is gonna be the first thing that we do. To change the lens is super easy. All we do is twist out the old one. So look at that side by side, that's a humongous difference. The new one did not come with a ring, so I'm actually gonna have to take this ring off as well, which is how you tighten it and get it adjusted. And then this same ring will just screw on to the new lens. Just make sure you don't touch anything you shouldn't. Probably should be wearing gloves. But then that twists on there to about there probably. And we put it in. Okay, so that's uh, not even close to in focus. So what we'll do here is just twist this until we find the right focus point. Ooh, that lens looks dirty too. That's no good. There, that's pretty good. Now we'll keep that in place and tighten the ring. We'll call that one good. So that was the easiest step. For the next step, we're gonna work on some PID tuning. And for that, what I wanna do is flash this with Betaflight. If you didn't see the other video, this came with Clean Flight 2.0, which should be okay, but really everything's running Betaflight now. So we're gonna get that going and get that flashed. Okay, so we're gonna try and get Betaflight on here. I looked in here and there's two boot pads just to the right here. And I'm pretty sure those are the boot pads. I think that's what that connection is. We're gonna try it and hopefully that works. I've got USB connected. And first thing I wanna do though is verify the board that I've got on here. Since Betaflight's not gonna be able to read it automatically, we're gonna go in and do a version. I know I checked this on the last one, but yeah, SP Racing F3. So it's what we should expect. We'll go to firmware flasher. There we go. It does read the version now. We want to go with whatever's the latest. I'm going to do flash on connect because I'm doing this by myself. Load. Now you're not going to be able to see it because what I do is I actually find it far easier when I'm by myself to plug in this side of the connector. So I leave this connected to the flight controller and then with my other hand, I can plug in the larger square connector without a problem. Okay, I've seen a whole bunch of different ways to try and get this done. These pads are not easy to get to because they're actually holes that you've got to get into. And I don't have a tool because of this bar and the way it's positioned. Normally I would use like a pair of wire snips that would fit right in the two holes and short out and fine, be fine. So I took a piece of wire here and stripped both ends. So one end I've got sticking in the hole itself. The other end I'm just gonna make contact with and hopefully that will get us connected. It's a little weird, but hey, it's something you only have to do very rarely. So now with my other hand, connect the USB port. And we're flashing. Yay, it's working. 
So I shouldn't have to stay connected anymore and pull that wire out. And that was the first try, I swear to God. Success, good deal. So now we're gonna have to go through and set up the whole thing from scratch. Uh, I have serial, I know on UART2 in this case, we'll save and reboot there. I had tons of problems getting DSHOT to work with clean flight. So I'm gonna try it again, but first I wanna get the basics working so I'm right back where I was last time before we go too far. So I've got multi-shot and I like motor stop. I know a lot of people don't, but for now I still like it. I know this board is in at 90 degrees, so we'll save that at 90 degrees. I'm using an XSM receiver, so it is serial based and S bus. I'm gonna do 4,000 and 2,000 for now, just to make sure I don't overwhelm this board. There I'm at 22%, that should be fine. I could probably go higher, but for now I'm not gonna worry about it. I do want, I don't have a race transponder, but I do want telemetry. That's one of my goals here before we're done. Probably take me a few tries to get that right. VBAT, you notice we have nothing, not working. For PID tuning, we're gonna leave our default PIDs for now, just to uh, make sure everything works first. Receiver will need to go to JR Spectrum. Modes, I'll do my default that I always do. So air mode, angle, and horizon are on two. Angle mode is the first switch position. Air mode I want in horizon and rate mode and horizon and beeper, which doesn't exist right now, but I'm gonna take care of that too if I can. Oh, beeper needs to be on aux three. One of the problems I had with this the first time was getting D-Shot to work. I spent probably an hour before I realized it didn't work and then before I finally gave up on it. So I've got multi-shot is what I had last time. I've already made sure that works, so now I'm gonna try D-Shot and see if just going to beta flight is enough to take care of it. In the last video, I did update BL Heli, so I know BL Heli S is on the latest version here. So let's go ahead and save and reboot here. Okay, so I've, you can see I do have, just to make sure you always, always, always connect an antenna whenever you plug it in, so I'm plugging in the battery now. It's interesting they didn't beep at me again. I do have receiver, so if I arm. Oh, it took forever. Now we're armed. Nope. Something it still just does not like D-Shot. I do not, wa not know why. So beta flight was not enough just to get that going. So something about these, whether it's because the ground isn't connected I don't know, but they do not like D-Shot. So I'm gonna go back to multi-shot for now and, and I'm fine with that. It's not a huge deal. It was just nice to know I wanted to see if that would take care of it, but it won't. Oh well. Because now I'm back on multi-shot and we go to motors and test and yep, very happy. They're very happy. Okay, next up I have two more things I need to do. One, there's no buzzer on this. I, I don't know why, I think they wanted to keep it under $150, but a little thing like a buzzer goes a long way. So I've got an extra buzzer cable here. These are like $2. I've got header pins I got off of extras from a FreeSky XM module. So it comes with pins and I never use these 90 degree pins, but in this case, they're kind of perfect. So I'm gonna put these pins right here in the buzzer spot on the card and I will solder those in. That does fit, right? Yeah, that fits. I'll leave a little space so there's room to connect that. I like the buzzer to be modular so I can take it off if I need it. And then the VBAT pins I need to solder up here so I can actually use the telemetry. If I hook up telemetry without having VBAT, it won't actually do me any good whatsoever. So that would be pointless. So I need to solder those up also. In order to do that, I think I am gonna have to remove this top card, I, the uh, flight controller. I don't really want to, but I think I have to. So we'll do that next. To do that, I, I won't show every second of that, but to do that, I should just be taking out these four nuts on each side and remove that. And hopefully I can slide it off without removing the entire frame, but we'll find out. So yeah, the card came off really easily. So if you need to get to the bottom, it's not a problem. The only thing really connecting the two together are the multiple connections here for the ESC signal wires. And it's also enough that it's powering this board. So the power on the board here is probably just five volts, which does you absolutely no good for 
voltmeter reading. In my last video, someone made fun of my soldering iron, and they're right, this thing is totally worn out. But that's one of the advantages of having a good soldering iron. I've got a weller, and I just put a new tip in it, so now we're good to go. So there we go. So what I prefer to do is get it in and get it spaced just about right, and just keep it sideways. Instead of laying it completely flat so it falls out, here if I just set it sideways, it barely takes anything at all to get these to connect. So I've got it on there and I'm just going to put a little dab on there and that's it. Now it's in just the right spot, just right where I want it. Now the other one then is much easier because it's already held in place. Next I need to get a connection from the battery terminals here that connects directly to the battery up to this pad which is the, nope not that one. Yeah, this one, the v, it's VBAT port. So this will actually read the voltage off of the battery and then when I have telemetry, it will feed it into my radio so I can see that. So I have to get the connection from here to here, which I'm gonna do on the bottom of the connection here. And I want these to be long enough. I've got some extra cables from a JST battery lead. These are probably 22 gauge, so there's, I, there's you're not going to be passing amps through these, but they're strong enough to carry the higher volts that aren't that high in this case, but a little bit. So these I actually cut, and they're probably a little too long because I just need to go from there. I want some extra to be able to feed it around and then around. Um, I'm going to make these a little bit shorter. Okay, now I'll tin up both sides of these wires. Do this side first because it's probably a little more precarious. Probably more than I need. There we go. There's negative, positive. There's negative. Make sure they are not connecting. They are not. Okay, so the negative is on this side. Hot. Yeah, it's good enough. Probably would have been smart to unplug this and do this on a flat surface. I would recommend that. Actually, if you're doing this, all you have to do is remove the port right here. Just do that, but I'm almost done, so I'm not going to because I am lazy. So that's the guy who gets up at 5 a.m. to record YouTube videos. All right, that's good. Those are on there pretty good. So now those need to feed through here and they will not be in the way. That's the important part. So when I slide this back in, they're just going to fit up underneath in between the two here. So that's good. And there's plenty of room to pull the card off if I need to. Now this one, I'm not going to be able to get my hands in there. So I'm going to use needle nose pliers. I don't really want to liquefy this entire blob of solder. So I'm going to try and go real fast. I do want to get it in there a little bit. Not entirely happy with that, so I'm going to try and put another glob of solder on top of it. Try and get it to melt in there a little better. Just give me a layer. There we go. That, that's better. Hopefully we can see what's going on here. Okay, so they're connected together and I think that'll work for my purpose. Like I said, I'm not pulling any amperage through here. All this is for is just to be able to read the voltage. So I'm gonna put this back on top and try this before going any further to make sure now I have voltage and nothing explodes. 
Please don't explode. I've only put one nut in place because I might have to take it back out for a further step. But for now, we're going to connect up the USB port. Please don't spark. Please don't spark. Please don't spark. That looks good so far. Okay, I've gotten the board back in place. I've put one nut just in case I have to take it back out to do something else. I'm gonna try and get it connected here. I'm gonna connect it via USB first just to make sure everything looks good and I don't have any explosions at this point. Nope, that looks good. Okay, we're powered on. Everything looks leveled. Nothing's freaking out, so that's good. Now, if you haven't made one of Joshua Bardwell's smoke stoppers or whoever he took the design from, I, I, this is the video I've watched. Now's the time where you really need it because I've done several connections here that could have been kind of shady, but I'm gonna make this work anyway. What that does is keep everything from exploding if I made it short. I don't have one, so I'm gonna use the pullout method. Guaranteed success. So we're gonna connect a battery here, see what happens. No smoke, no smoke, no fire, no nothing. That looks good. I mean, there shouldn't be, but you never know. And look, hey, look. 11.4 volts, we have, vo we have voltage, yay! So the next thing, that worked, I'm happy. And then the next side here, I'm gonna connect the buzzer, which is buzzing. Hey look, the buzzer works. Go to modes here. Uh, buzzer, 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 yep. There we go, hey, my buzzer works too. So I can get this buzzer connected, which I just realized how long this cord is. That is really long, but I'll get it tucked up in there somewhere. It'll, it'll be hidden. You'll never see it. And, and I don't want to because part of the reason I'm putting this much effort into this thing is because it is beautiful. This whole frame and design and the look of it and the gold is just beautiful. So I want it to work. I want it to be good. And it was close last time. I think we're gonna get there this time though. So now we have a buzzer. We have a buzzer, we have VBAT. Now, all we need is telemetry on the receiver. If you watched my original video on the F200, you saw me wire up this, which this is an XSR receiver, a FreeSky, and then this is the cable that it came with. The cable that it came with had nice connections on it. I want this to be modular, so I just wired this up. It took me twice to do it, but I wired this up so that way I could connect it because I don't know, I go through a lot of models here and I don't want to put a dedicated receiver and keep it in all of them. But now I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this because I like it. I like this model a lot. I know I had problems with it, but I like it a lot and I want it to be good. So I'm going to put a permanent receiver option in here now. So in order to do that, I have a new XSR and a new JSTSH four pin connector. I bought these off Amazon. I'll link these down below. You just should have some in this case. And then a receiver where I bought them in bulk when they were on sale because I knew I was gonna need them in a case like this. The reason I'm gonna mainly use another one is because I have this one wired, but I don't have the telemetry connection in place and there's no good way to put it anywhere. And this is big and ugly and in the way and I'm just better off redoing this connection and saving this for a different build, which these connectors are really common. I'll just reuse this another time in another test. The first thing I have to do is get these cables in the right order because you'll notice I go black, basically it's brown, but it's black, red, space, white, and this is in a totally different order. And these have to be in the right order or I will go insane. So I'm going to take these out and change the order on them. I'm going to do one so you can see what it looks like and then I'm going to do the rest because I want to get my face down there but not have you look at the back of my head. There we go. So that's how you take it out. It's really easy. Now I'll do the rest of them. So I'm going to do this last one so you can see one more thing I want to look at just as a reminder. So what you do is you pull this tooth up here and it releases the, a metal pin on the inside and then you can pull this out. And when you do that, what I want to look at is which side's on the top. So it's the flat side of the connector that's on the top toward where this is. I didn't, couldn't remember. And now I can see the same order there and I've got the white one, which I'll do first and just slide it in. All you have to do is slide, push it in, basically until it stops and then it'll even pop. So then we have a space, and then we have the red one. There's the last one popped. Now, it's in the right order. See how much better that is? Oh, see, all is right with the world. Okay, now we have the receiver side. So we have the several connections that are very straightforward. We have ground five volts. Well, that's obvious, and those match up with what we've got here now. And then we have smart port, which is where our telemetry will be, and CCPM. So this green one we don't need at all. But this S port, that's the one we're going to have to pay extra attention to in just a minute. But first, we're going to get rid of the green connection. 
There's no CCPM for us. There we go. That's gone completely. Now we have to look at what we're going to do to get this mounted. So this goes in this port, which is UART2, and then it needs to run to wherever the receiver is going to go. This is taking long enough. I ran out of space on my camera and missed a couple steps. So what I've done is soldered the wires together for the UART pin and the receiver pin. I'm using the same receiver I used before because it's already programmed and ready to go. Why not? And then the extra wire, the telemetry wire, I have wired to UART3 right here, TX. So I'm going to set this up to transmit to the receiver for telemetry. Okay, a bit of a gap here in the telemetry section because I had a problem. I actually had to update the firmware on my receiver. It did not work. I will link up in the corner now for the video that I did in order to get it working and how to update the firmware on the XSR. I don't want to go through that whole process in this video, but you can go see that and that helped. So now the last thing I was doing was adding the telemetry and discovered sensors. And now I have a whole bunch of sensors and they're flashing because they're updating properly, which they were not doing before. They would connect and then they would stop and it just didn't work. So now they're working and collecting data. Now that I have my sensors in place there, I have set VFAS to my front screen. I also set a page with VFAS on there. And then I set up some alarms. After a little bit of testing on and off, I'm now going to show you what I settled on for now for my battery alert settings. So I've set up logical switches here. And in the logical switches, I have two of them. I have a higher voltage alarm, and I've set that to 4.8 volts. And that has to be below 4.8 volts for five seconds. So on the delay here, I think it's the delay. Yeah, delay has to be at 4.8 volts for five seconds before it will start alerting me or before it'll trip this switch at least. The second one I have set at 14.5 volts, which isn't as low as I can go on here, but it has to be there for three seconds before it will start alerting. So I found this to be a pretty good mix. So I have these switches and all these do is trigger when they hit that. And then I have two beeps that so one, if the first one triggers, it plays a warning one sound and it plays it every 10 seconds. So once I get low, it'll play it every 10 seconds for me. And the second one will play it every second. So once I hit that second one, which might be able to go a little bit lower even on the voltage, but it works pretty well. It starts alerting me every second. So it's been a pretty good combination for me to know about when I have to land. With this, I've been landing at about 15, to 20% battery, which is about where I want to be. Now I think all I have left to do is put it back together. We've got the lens on, we have the receiver connected now with telemetry. I've added a buzzer so it will, I can find it if I lose it. My telemetry will let me know if something happens. I think this is going to be a rocking model now and I've not spent hardly any money on it. My plan to put it together is to put the receiver right here underneath and have it connect out the side and then I'll put the antennas back where they were last time up through these holes. So I'm gonna put that together and uh, then hopefully we can try it. The first thing I've gotta do that would be really easy to forget is to install the nuts back on all four corners of this board because if you'll remember, I didn't tighten it down. I'm pretty comfortable with everything now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. All back together and ready to go. I wanted to make sure that the wires are totally clear and yeah, they're not even close. Everything is tucked up here and pretty nice. And the buzzer is tucked up in here. It fits really nicely in there. I just have the wires tucked under here. I don't have them cut to length or anything right now, but they're there and it still looks nice and it's still gorgeous. It didn't mess up the looks at all. And the antennas are still hanging out here. I hope now it's awesome. All right, I finally have a good day to test all this stuff. And I wanna say the transmitter in this is really good because when I do a scan on my goggles, this is the only channel it finds. It doesn't catch three or four channels that are close enough. So that's a pretty good indicator of a good transmitter. So now let's see what kind of an angle we've got. We are out of focus, not even close to in focus and the color is terrible. So <clears throat> I'm gonna blame the lens for that, not necessarily the drone. We'll see if we can come in and land and fix that. Whoa. Okay, so there I can get it in focus, but the color is terrible. Absolutely terrible. 
And I know there's no IR filter on this lens, which might just make it unusable. So I don't recommend this lens. I don't think that's a deal breaker for anything else on here, but that lens does not work. It looks awful. I actually have a, another 2.3 lens that I think is gonna be better. I'm gonna put on and try that. So I couldn't take any of the video with a bad lens. So I had to get a new one. This is actually a GoPro lens with IR block. So, hey, look at that. I can see now. Now it's really dark. It's really late in the day, but I can see my angle of attack now is outstanding. There's full throttle. Beeping. It's beeping at me, but I can actually see at the angle that I need to. Batteries don't seem to quite keep up with my voltage listings, but hey, what the heck, they still work. Now we're talking. This battery might not have been quite ready to go. There's. Nice. This thing. Now with the right lens. Okay, fine. My batteries can't keep, quite keep up for full speed all the time. But this thing is now really awesome. Getting the lens on there, telemetry, yes, I know I'm killing the battery. May have to change that a little more because it does just seem to be dipping a lot. But it's got a great weight to it. The, uh, I, I really like, <laughs> I've flown so many micros recently that I've forgotten to appreciate the extra mass that you get with a 250 size quad and the performance you can get out of it to make it do what you want you just it's hard to do on a little little micro things that I normally wouldn't be able to do and this is the standard edition look at it glo float like it just floats nicely and then when you want to go it'll go oh man I like this thing so much all right, so I've got more batteries, so I'm not going to toast this one. That is why I added telemetry, so that doesn't happen anymore. We'll see what the voltage is on it. And now I am uh, still moving forward, and this is what I couldn't do before with the old lens. With that 2.8 lens, I just couldn't see, even going forward a little bit, what I was doing. So now I can just do some 180s, go back, get low, get too low. I'm still right side up. Let's see if I can get back in the air. Oh yeah, there we go. Just bring it up just a little bit. It's awfully dark. There we go. Let's do another pack. I want to do another pack. Here we are with a uh, another four. This is just 4S. These are 4S 70C batteries. And I've been uh, trying to learn stunts and freestyle on my micros, and that didn't work at all. But this, man, I love this thing. It's so nice. I'm always nervous about that pond. I want to go through these trees every time, but with that pond right on the other side, it, uh, it still freaks me out a little bit. I'll, I can do it, but not a problem. But still, <laughs> that pond, I always remember it's there. We do it? Nope. Missed them. Where'd we go? <laughs> that was a splat. I just took a pretty hard crack with this. I could hear it from a ways away. Here, I thought I broke, a, broke the frame for sure at that point. But it shows no wear, no stress that I can see on the frame. So I'm super impressed with the frame. I don't know what is up with this antenna, but it is uh, pretty pretzeled. That's what I would call it. The main front props, let's see, that one bent just a little bit. I think that one's fine. I think that one's probably fine, and this one bent pretty good. So this, I think these will even been back into shape. So that was a hard smack, and it has basically no problem at all. I don't think I'll have any problem just putting, putting everything back into shape. I'm going to find out now.
After that, I just bent everything back into place and did a quick little hover to make sure it would hover and I wasn't missing anything obvious, but now we should be able to fly it, I think. It, everything seemed just fine. It is getting pretty dark. Now, the white dynamic range on this lens is not great. So, the uh, like, if you wanted to spend more money and put a different uh, camera on it completely, you could do that, but I wanted to spend the least amount possible on this and make it, uh, make it as good as I could. So, I didn't want to spend $30 on a whole new camera, which would make it probably perfect. Instead, I spent $10 on a lens and called it good. There, now with the right lens, amazing. So much better. This is a GoPro lens. I had to screw that thing in all the way to get it to work. Now, just a quick summary of what I did. I added a buzzer. So I've got a buzzer in here now, which is essential if you do lose it. And the way I throw this thing around, I do occasionally. I added telemetry on the receiver, which made it so now it beeps at me and drives me crazy, but at least makes it so I don't ruin my battery, which I would have on those last couple packs. There's no way I would have come down as soon as I did. So that saves me there. And a GoPro lens. That one was the trick for me. It has to be an IR block lens. So you saw what happened when I put it in a non IR block lens. It was terrible. So you can just replace the whole camera and spend about 30 to $40. A Runcam Swift 2 would be awesome because then you could add OSD also, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to spend as little as possible on this model. That's what I did. $10 lens, $1 buzzer, and you are good to go. It's awesome. And I have smashed the heck out of this thing. I missed a tree and clipped it and smashed it, and I thought for sure it was broken. I'm, I'm sure you've seen that already, but it, it flew great after that. I'm probably due for a new set of props, but these props, I need to find out what these are for sure because I am super impressed with these. They're 5042s and they have been so durable. I now have nothing but good things to say about this. I love the way it floats through the air. The weight and the distribution is just really nice for me. I'm not a professional freestylist by any means, as you've seen, but it feels really nice. And I feel like I could actually learn to do things with this that I haven't been able to do with anything I've flown before. It's plenty fast. I want to get some gates out. This is going to be my racer for the summer for sure, unless something shocking comes along here soon because it just does a really nice job. And for the price, $150, so $162 I think is what I've got in it now. And it's great. It's just rips for that price. I don't care that it can't support D-Shot. Multi-Shot is fine. So final conclusion, it's awesome. If you found this video useful, give us a like and comment down below with any other mods that you would do to this. Do you think an OSD is really essential now that I've got telemetry? I, I personally don't, it's nice, but I don't think so. What do you think? And until next time, remember, awesome flies for dream, whatever that means.